A zoo in Denmark is asking people to donate their small pets as food for captive predators. I'll tell you more about what that zoo's up to, but more importantly, I'm going to tell you how this relates to the worms living inside an endangered parrot in New Zealand. For context, look at this bird. Okay, it's not a parrot from New Zealand. This is a California condor. There are these great big vultures that were once found all across North America. But by 1987, there were just 22 of them left. So scientists captured all of them and put them in captivity. The goal was to save the birds. And one thing that can kill birds, especially in captivity, is the parasitic lice that live in their feathers. So the people taking care of those 22 California condors treated their feathers with a pesticide to kill all the lice living in their feathers. But it turns out there's a species of louse that is only found in the feathers of California condors, or at least there used to be, but it's extinct because the humans wiped it out when they were trying to save the birds. Does it matter that a louse was wiped out, an insect? I mean, on the one hand, why go to all the trouble of saving a bird and then actively eradicate an insect? On the other hand, Maybe the birds are more valuable for some reason. Are they? Are they more valuable because they're cuter? Should we only be saving cute animals and not the ones we don't find adorable? If I want to save a species of bat, do I need to convince people that it's cute first in order to make it worthwhile, or does it fall into the insect category? My favorite paper this week is all about this topic. It's about the conservation of parasites that live inside this huge parrot in New Zealand called a kakapo. Now this parrot is fascinating. It's nocturnal, it can't fly, it's like two feet tall, the males make these weird booming noises, and their population got down to 51 individuals in the 1990s. So, like with the California condor, Conservation biologists rounded up every single kakapo, they moved them to islands where they'd be safe from predators, and they've been doing everything they can to save those parrots ever since. But what about the parasites that live inside the parrots? Well, in this new paper, researchers go through 800-year-old piles of kakapo poop, or as I like to call it, kakapo caca, and they find that if you go back 800 years, you can find 16 different species of parasites in the poop. But if you look at modern samples, after that population bottleneck, there are just three parasites left. That means more than 80% are already extinct. Now, kakapo are making a comeback. They're more than 200 alive today, and that's great. But the big question is, should our conservation plans be focused on the parrots, or should our conservation plans be expanded to make sure we're saving as many of that parrot's parasites as we can too? So let me bring this back to the zoo in Denmark. We want to conserve predators like lions and tigers. And just like a parasitic worm, you can't have a predator unless other animals are getting hurt. So if you want to save a predator, you can only do it by hurting other animals. Now to be clear, that zoo in Denmark isn't asking you to release your pet bunny into the wolf enclosure and watch what happens. Although a lot of people think that'd be really cool. What they're saying is that when your animal's ready to be euthanized, if and when, instead of just burying it or burning it or whatever you're gonna do with your dead cat or dog or bunny or whatever, you could donate it to the zoo. The zoo will euthanize it for you. They clearly have the facilities for that. And then they can feed it to the predators. But if you're a conservation biologist and you're looking after some endangered species, it's a little bit more like that scenario where you're letting your favorite bunny go in the wolf enclosure. If the animal you're saving has the same inherent value as the animals that want to hurt it, you have to accept that the creature you love might get hurt. It might get sick. It might get hunted. It might die. That's why it's hard. Anyway, I got a lot of feelings from this paper. That's why it's my favorite science story this week. There are five others I want to tell you about, but the only way to find out about those is to sign up for my free weekly newsletter. It's called The Bat Signal. Just go to followthebatsignal.com.